Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. McCabe, I'm, I'm, I've heard some confusion here today. I, I read you some quotes out that said uh, on four occasions over the last few years that said that uh, y'all weren't going to move towards a cap-and-trade program. I then read you something uh, that indicated you are going to a cap-and-trade program, and then you told uh, Congressman Barton that you weren't going to a cap-and-trade program. And uh, I find that hard to understand. Is it your position that you all are not heading towards a cap-and-trade program? This rule does not set up a cap-and-trade program, Congressman. All right. I beg to differ. Let me, let me go through some of the documents. And I guess we just have to start uh, with your own documents. And, you know, when you take a look at it in the Environmental Protection Agency, in the pre-plan that's out there in the summary, it says this proposal, talking about your plan, and I can be glad to give you a copy of this uh, after I finish reading it. This proposal presents two approaches to a federal plan for states and other jurisdictions that do not submit an approval plan to the EPA. A rate-based emissions trading program and a mass-based emissions trading program. Now, that to me sounds like cap and trade of one form or another. It goes on to say on page 43, as discussed at length in the emission guidelines, electric generation units operate less as individual isolated entities and more as multiple components of a large interconnected system designed to integrate a range of functions that ensure an uninterrupted supply of affordable and reliable electricity while also for the past several decades maintaining compliance with air pollution control programs. Since as a practical matter under both the electric, excuse me, emission guidelines and any federal plan, emissions reductions must occur at the affected electric generation units, a broad scale emission trading program would be particularly effective in allowing the electric generation units to operate in a way that achieves pollution control without disturbing the overall system of which they are a part and the critical functions that this system performs. In addition, consistency of requirements benefits the affected electric generation units as well as, as the states and the EPA in their roles as administrators, the EPA in their role as administrators and implementers of a trading program. The EPA believes that there are skip a line, and then the EPA believes there are compelling policy reasons that support the provisions of a proposed model trading rule at this time. It goes on to talk about uh, the public hearings that you had, which you didn't have in my district where you would have heard something completely different. As I told you before, I was elected on this issue, uh, and a 28-year incumbent who agreed with you all uh, isn't here because of this issue, cap and trade. And you go on to talk about their strong interest in seeing a model state program. And then it goes on to say, and I found this fascinating, in addition, some states have indicated that they may prefer to rely on a federal plan, either temporarily or permanently, rather than to develop a plan of their own. This proposal of a model trading rule addresses these policy interests. The approach of proposing model trading rules that are identical in all key respects to proposed federal plans that may be promulgated later is consistent with prior Clean Air Act Section 111D. Now, I don't know what, what kind of a, a universe or what English language that you're looking at, but I've just picked out a, you know, some small parts here, and every time I turn around, it's talking about this rule pushing on the states a trading plan similar to cap and trade, if not cap and trade uh, heavy, it's cap and trade of some form, and two different versions of it. And then it says, and I will I interpret it differently, it says, in addition, some states have indicated they may prefer to rely on a federal plan. That's because they're not going to do it. Because isn't it, am I not correct, that if a state says, like we heard earlier, that one of the states feared blackouts and people freezing in their homes, if they choose not to do it, you all are going to come in with your federal trading program and do a federal program. Isn't that correct? Yes or no? Uh it's simple yes or no? No, it's not. It's not a simple not, question to answer. It is a simple question. Are you going to make the states do a trading program if, you, if they don't comply with your clean power plan? Are you coming in there and impose a federal trading plan on them? And the answer is either yes or no. We have not finalized a federal plan. We have a proposal out there. So I cannot speak okay. to what the... Under this finalized. proposal, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be the natural and logical conclusion for someone reasonable reading the English language that I just read to you out of your own document. Wouldn't that not, would that not be reasonable? We have proposed trading programs, a rate-based one and a mass-based one, and I would commend you to the comment record 
uh, Congressman, where we got overwhelmingly input from states and utilities where, saying where that trading you, programs were effective and efficient and they were and used where to them you and they worked. And where you disenfranchised the people of Appalachia because you didn't come to talk to any of the coal producing areas in central Appalachia. You refused to come and have a hearing there. We asked you all to do it. You wouldn't do it. didn't have to be my district. could have been Mr. Johnson's district or Mr. McKinley's district or somebody else's district. You wouldn't do it. That's why your comments are going to support what you got because you went out and found the people that agreed with you to go put your hearings in. Mr. Chairman, I apologize. I am over my time. I yield back.